Now since uh, Bieler was in with the Audi and he had a, a fresh set of tyres and uh, top up of fuel. 675 leader comes in. This is the third placed car overall. Mark Blundell in the MG. Are you listening to this, British fans? Mark Blundell in third place overall after an hour and 45 minutes of racing. Brings the car in to hand over to uh, ex Brabham teammate Julian Bailey. Longtime friends and rivals. Bailey will take it over the third place car. Brundle still second for Bentley. Frank Beeler now fought his way back ahead of Martin Brundle a couple of laps ago. Three laps ago now to go into the lead for Audi. He's six and a half seconds ahead of Brundle, who, as uh, David said, was only two seconds slower on the previous lap. And uh, just ten seconds slower on lap times is the third placed MG. Well, these MG partnership, of course, the old dream team from Le Mans, Bailey and Blundell with Nissan two years. Great performances, Mark Blundell setting a record pole position here the year that he and Julian were sharing. Two years they drove here, then after that they went separate ways. Julian didn't do Le Mans again until 97 that with Lister, whereas Mark, of course, joined Peugeot and won Le Mans. So uh, separate careers, great, they've come back together again now and uh, they really are proving to be the dream team. Third place overall as they came into the pits. I bet young Kevin McGarrity, who is the third driver in the car, can barely wait until he gets his chance to take over a car potentially in a podium position. But, oh, look. Oh, Marky. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That was a, a slightly fast approach there on landing for the uh, road into the pits. As you said, David, when we saw David Terrian trying to make that corner, it's very tight. It is very tight indeed. And because the David Terrian had been uh, off there with his car, there was a lot of storms and it gets very, very slippery with all the people trying to cut the corner and putting stones on. And he obviously didn't quite make it and he went straight over the top and uh, covered the whole thing in stones. We can only hope the stones haven't gone somewhere they shouldn't go. Now, I'm just wondering if that is maybe a throttle connection. Is it possible that uh, Mark possibly had a sticky throttle and couldn't get it snapped shut in time? It's certainly right on the top of the engine there in the MG. Looks like a hydraulic connection of some description, but I don't know what it is, but um, certainly we're connecting something up on the top of there. Well, we're looking at the race leader now. This is the number one Audi of uh, Frank Bieler. Bieler rocketing on in this car, chasing the uh, prototype. Is that... Uh, oh, I was going to say it's the Orica prototype, but it's not. It, um, it's one of the Dick Barber racing cars. Well, Mark Blundell has handed over the MG, and as Julian Bailey's bodywork gets reattached, he's down in the pits with Amanda Stretton. We'll catch up with her and find out how it feels to have the MG at speed at Le Mans. Now, Mark, when you came here at the beginning of the weekend, did you really think that at one point you were going to be running third overall? I knew the car was going to have a lot of performance. I mean, we said that from day one. We said we were going to surprise a lot of people. And we just haven't done any laps, that's the problem. But, um, you know, I'm having a little bit of brake problems with the car at the moment. Uh, so I just run off in the pit lane coming in just because the brake pedal travelling down too far and catching the roll pedal, so... But, you know, it's all an experiment. Now, they had the back of the car off when it came into the pits then. Were they just checking or is there a slight problem? Uh, it's OK for the moment. I think just a precautionary check. I mean, um, as I say, we've done so little mileage in this car. To be running up there is a fantastic effort by everybody. Great for MG, but it's not over yet. Now, uh, you and Julian have a long history together. You've just handed the car over. Do you think you actually might be able to make it to the end of the race? Why not? <laughs> Uh, that's the objective, that's why we're here, 24 hours of racing, and uh, there's only a couple of hours gone, so it's a long way. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, why not indeed, wouldn't I? As <laughs> I said earlier, I did mention to Hugh today that uh, after all the dramas and almost inability of the cars to get out of the pits during uh, qualifying and the warm-up, uh, it would just be the uh, most ironic twist of fate if one of them ran all the way through to the end. And this one, well, came in in third place and may well retain that third position after the change, but perhaps dropping down to fourth or fifth place, but still running very strongly with nearly two hours gone here at Le Mans. Join us for more in a minute.